else I can write in here? Render bots. Yay. Okay. So I've just written that. Now the minute I click down, if you notice to the left hand side of the window, the properties tab suddenly comes alive. It says, hello, I'm awake. Uh, because you've now given me something to give you a property on. So in this case, because um, I've written some text, it's given me um, all the formatting I need for that, such as font, etc. everything you'd expect. But before we just look over there for a second, you'll notice the cursor is still flashing to the right of the word renderbox yay. Now, at this point, most people are going to press the enter key, expecting it to stop us texting or things like that. In this case, um, we can do this a lot. We're going to be pressing sort of the escape key, or depending on the keyboard you've got in front of you, I've got my new MacBook uh, 26 with a touch bar interface at the top. Um, so I've noticed it says done on mine. So if you've got the, uh, the MacBook Pro with the touch bar, it says done on the top left hand part of the keyboard. Um, but otherwise you're gonna press the escape key. So I'm gonna press that. And once you press that, you'll notice that we have now what's something called a bounding box around it. See this, a bounding box? So this means I can now pick this up and move it wherever I like. So I'm just clicking and dragging inside of that text. This means I can now put this text wherever I like on the screen. Okay, cool. So we hit the text tool, click on the screen, type something out, and we press escape or done, depending on the keyboard. And it just let us then manipulate the text. In other words, it says we finished with it. So again, if we go to the left-hand part of the screen, under where properties, you can see that um, it's got all of these drop down, these little diamonds, these little triangles lit up here. So this where it sits on the screen, if it rotates, if so, which button we've got these nice little dials here, look, you can actually flip it up and like a little swing going round. Okay, Command Z, we just want to do that. Or then Command Tap Z, it just undoes that action. It's got the word scale here, so even though we kind of got it at a certain typeface, at a certain type, um, we can still change that by moving this button down here, which is pretty good. So Command Z, we can undo that. So what I want you to do is really just go ahead, press the text tool, just type your name in. And this is great because once you've got just something on the screen, just look around the interface and really start to play because you're going to find there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to um, open itself up to you. Otherwise, you're just going to get staring at a blank canvas and wondering what's going on. So this is where the best places to start. And I love this as I move this around. You'll see that I've got these um, center lines popping up telling me where I am moved on the screen. Very, very helpful. So that is the inspector. It just tells us all about that piece of text and how we can manipulate it. So with the word properties, this tells us where it sits in 3D space and how we can manipulate it. We see a new box here said the word text, give that a click. And now something a bit more familiar, again, a very Photoshop X. We've got the uh, fonts, okay? And then click on the fonts and you can go to that and make it anything you like. Um, regular italic bold, everything I'd expect to see in a normal word processor. Also including the size and alignment, etc. So. Again, we're not going to explore this too much, it's just a quick look at the interface, but I think it's important that we just get something on the page so you can see what's happened. Okay, so what I'm going to do is click on this little render box and again, just click delete. So that's the inspector. So the inspector's going to tell us anything we put inside of that box. Now, we've got this word called Project Paint. As you can see, it removes this thing called layers. And this layers window is really, really important. Again, if you use Photoshop, I don't know if you haven't, but if you have, you'll know that we can put things in a hierarchical order. So something in the top, something in the bottom, something in the middle. This is great if you want something to go behind something else. So the project pane holds all of our groups and media inside of here. So anything I create, it will go inside of here. So let's have a look at that and see what I'm talking about. So let's go for text tool again. Let's click anywhere on the screen. Again, the minute I click, my properties tab is lit up and it says, here you go, here's all that stuff. So let's put in um, render bots in here. Uh, press done or escape, top left hand corner. That gives us a render box. We can now move wherever I like, okay? So we'll see what's happened there. It's suddenly this thing called groups appeared and the word render bots is inside of that. So the group says, I've got the word render bots. But again, a lot of my customers would say to me, well, it looks like I've got two render bots in here you haven't it's just one it's just that we have the word group and inside the group is a text box if I hit that little collapsible um, triangle there you'll see that actually it does only show one so the group contains um, one element which is render bots but when we open that group up 
it looks like we've got two in our project actually but there's only one so a bit confusing if you start the first time around hopefully you're still with me and you've got and, you, and you, you're uh, you're following along so what if i want to bring something else into here well this is quite cool so i'm in this word called group and in there i have a text box called render box inside of here this little box here if i do this little arrow click you can see i can create um these kind of vector type um elements be it a line circle or rectangle so let's go for a circle now again when we press circle we expect the circle to appear on the screen it doesn't what it does it gives me a little tool here that i can um, click and drag out a circle so i click and hold and drag and suddenly if i go left i sort of squish it make a sort of egg shape so a good sort of task to think about here is to do is hold the shift key down and shift key sits just above the function key on the left hand side of my mac keyboard here and what this means is it keeps it perfectly um, circular if i let go of shift suddenly i get kind of a weird squishy uh, ball thing so hold down shift let go and there you go i've now got my circle now what's interesting here again is that the tool is still highlighted so i can go ahead and create another one straight away but i don't want to so if i hold down command z it just undoes that and takes that away so i've still got the um, the circle tool highlighted so again remember the text box we're going to press the escape key on the top left hand corner of the keyboard and then boom it means that this is now its own element which means i can now move it wherever i like um, so what I'm going to do, folks, to explain the grouping and kind of how those layers work again, is just change the colour of this circle. If I come over to the left-hand side, my computer's already said um, properties. This is what it looks like: size, location, etc. But under the word shape, which suddenly appeared, it says the word fill. So if I uncheck it, there is no fill. So if I look at fill colour. I can now tap this little old triangle to the right. It brings up this beautiful colour board, and I can go through and set the colour. So let's go for uh, stop light green. There you go. Nice and bright. Um, so if I bring this to here, so I'm going to move it over the word render. There you go. And it's sitting on top. And as you can see here, the word render box is sitting at the bottom of the group. So if I grab hold of render box, click and hold and drag, you'll see that this line appears. Not this, but the line above it. So that little line. If I let go now, it now sits above it. And this really is, it might seem really simple to you guys and you're thinking, okay, skip ahead three minutes. Um, for people who've not used a product like this, um, this is integral into the whole the way motion works. We have to be aware of the layers, otherwise our animation can get pretty screwed up pretty quickly. So there you go, so there's the word render box there. And it's now sitting on top of the green circle. Again, if I move the circle above, click and hold, I'm waiting for that little line, bang, there you go, so now it's sitting on top of it. Simple as that. So that's, hopefully that explains a little bit better the way the groups can work. You can go ahead and get more groups and things like that, but for now we're just going to leave that there. So, we've come across here, we also see the word import. Now import is exactly what it says. At some point your customer is going to give you a graphic, or you've already got a graphic in mind you want to use. In this case it's really simple. Uh, the import window will open up um, your finder and ask you to locate the object you want to bring it could be a Father Christmas icon or it could be you know a car or, or even a video the import window will open up and just say show me that and bring it into the uh, interface uh, next up we have the word add object um, this is quite uh, crazy and there's lots of stuff we're going to play with in here we're not going to look too much in here at the moment, but, but as you can see, remember I said about adding groups, we can add another group inside of here if we wanted later on. And again, we'll have a good look at this at some point later on. And motion's made up of something called behaviours and filters. Again, Photoshop people know what a filter is. It enables something to look different just by applying a layer on top of it. Behaviours allow us to make objects move in and out. So for this example, I'm going to give you an idea of what a behaviour is going to do. So I've already got the circle highlighted. So I'm going to go into here and say uh, basic motion, align to, and I'm going to choose the word fade in, fade out. Very simple animation, we'll give it a click. Now what happens here is, and don't worry, the, um, the green uh, circle is still there, but it, I'm going to draw your attention to the bottom part of the window. So what's happened down here is, everything that's in my layers project here is replicated down here inside of my new timeline window. So this is our timeline. 
and you'll see here that the word group, circle, mirrors perfectly what's up here. But now we see the word, a little cog here, and the word fade in, fade out. This is represented by this purple bar. So if I move this across, you'll see that it is actually being faded in. And that's how simple a behavior is. That behavior is set to be executed out. So I'm gonna click off over here. You'll see nothing's idle. I'm gonna hit the play button down here. And there you go, it's just suddenly appeared. So nice and simple, just comes across and there you go, done. So that's a bit of an anima animation there. Already done, no keyframing involved, it's all built in. Okay, so that's what a behavior is and how it will work with this. It's just, it's just a very, very simple uh, explanation of that. But as for the rest of this, um, we've got the heads up display and the share button. So what's heads up display? This is quite a cool little thing. So so we can look at the heads up display. So I've got the word render bots highlighted here. If I hit the word heads up display, the HUD, you'll see suddenly it appears here. And what it does is it gives us a little snippet of information just about that graphic there. This can be handy when we don't want to go over into our properties window, behavior filters, text, etc. When we don't really want to come out to filter all the way through these, there's quite a few men menus there. It gets a little bit complicated and sometimes we don't need to drill that far down into the menus. So what the HUD does, it just says to us, click on me and I'll give you round about the most used bit of information about that object there. So in this case, I'll be able to change the color really simply. Um, see quality blend mode here size again these are the things that you might want to change very very quickly and this word tracking track this in beautiful um, so that's the HUD it's a floating sort of tool by that means to do it next to the HUD we have the share button and the share is basically say to us once we've built this bit of animation here in motion we can now take it and throw it out into the outside world in other words we can create a movie file with it a .mov and that enables us to then um, put it onto our iPads, our iPhones, upload to YouTube, etc. All from the share menu. So that's how we're going to get a project out of here. So let's look down here. So this is all about the time, the timeline. So everything that's down here suddenly has an amount of time tied to it. And again, I'm trying to keep it as as as, as basic as I can, guys, because this is this is new and it can look a bit complicated. So let's have a look. So at the moment, I've got a group. And in that group, I have a circle, and I have uh, the word render bots. The circle has a behavior attached to it called uh, fade in, fade out. Now, what I want to do is just go remove that. So I'm going to click on it and press the delete key. Okay, and it's gone. So all I'm left is a group, and inside that group, I have a circle and the word render bots. And let's quickly just change the color of render bots. How am I going to do that very quickly? Well, I'm going to hit the HUD, click on the little arrow there, and just pick the color. There we go. So render bots is now in there. Get rid of that. So here we go. We've got the word circle and we've got word render bots. So if I press play now, they are both on the screen at the same time. And the reason for that is because each of the elements I have on the page has a um, timeline bar with it. So if I move the circle over here, you'll see that render bots will start off all by itself and then suddenly the word circle will appear. So let's press the, plus, press the um, play button. So render bots, render bots, render bots, and green circle. Okay, so just press pause. So I can move these up and down wherever I want. So if I want it to be the reverse, if I follow render bots, clicking and just dragging it across to the right. Just hit the rewind button, press play. So now it's the green, and then it's the, uh, the word render bots. So very, very simple, but it's a good idea to understand what's going on right down here in the interface. So that's where we're going to leave it. Um, just press the save here, hit the red icon there. Um, what we just looked at there was a quick look at the interface and what motion is capable of. So as we get through to the next lesson, we're gonna start learning about just creating your name and animating it across the timeline. And I think that's a really good place for us to really start learning uh, motion. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, a like and subscribe it really helps me um, as you know I've not been on here um, creating stuff for a long time this is my first video of a series I um, hope you've enjoyed this any questions please feel free to ask um, you can comment right below here I'm having a bit of issue with my um, Twitter account at the moment so please feel free to hit james at renderbox.co.uk for now um, but I hope you've enjoyed it um, I love doing this so please like and subscribe it does help any comments I will happily help
Uh, until next time, take care, enjoy, and happy rendering. Thank you.